Good morning. So you see in the title, it says rich queen, poor queen, rich queen, poor queen. We hear all the time that we come from royalty, that um, one of the things they didn't want us to know is that we came from a lineage of kings and queens. And even still in today's times, there are still kings and queens um, in Africa. If we think about even from a biblical standpoint, um, once we come into the kingdom, once we give our lives to Christ, we be become part of a royal priesthood. And the thing about that is this means that we still get the titles of queens and kings. That title still exists. Even today in um, <clears throat> places like Africa, there are still chiefs. Uh, there are still kings, there are still queens, but the difference in, I think, what we think about when we think kings and queens <clears throat> is that although those titles exist, it doesn't always reflect the quality of life that they are living. Even for us in the kingdom, you know, we hear we're a royal priesthood and all of those things, and so the the title alone um, has its purpose, that the title queen has its purpose, but it doesn't equate to substance, just like many other titles that we can be given in the world space, mother, father, sister, brother, you know, all of those things are titles if the substance isn't there, they're just titles. And so this morning, I want to talk about the rich queen and the poor queen. And when we think about it, even from a biblical standpoint, if we are all a royal priesthood, but there are stark differences in how we're living out our life, then we must understand that what is the, um, the pivotal switch or the stark difference <clears throat> between the rich queen and the poor queen is mindset and behavior, mindset and behavior. And so this morning I have come up with a list that denotes the differences in the two. If you come on, say hello in the comments. If you're coming back on the replay, put hashtag replay in the comments if there is um, conversation that you wanna have. Even if you're on the replay, leave it in the comments. I'll always come back and uh, respond. So I want to talk about just, I'm just going to go right down the list with <clears throat> um, distinctions or differences in the rich queen and the poor queen. And I want to start off with giving because what I find for most women, most women, not all, but most women is they are a giver. And so in some form or fashion, we just have this giving nature as in, you know, giving would be something that would nurture something else. I think it's attached to our divine nurturing nature that we have, unless it's been compromised in some form or fashion. For those of you who are entrepreneurs, because we take ourselves into our business, whether we realize it or not, we take ourselves into our business. The difference in the rich queen and the poor queen as it relates to giving the rich queen increases the value of what she gives. The rich queen increases the value of what she gives. The poor queen overgives and overcompensates. I'm going to give you guys some practical examples. So what this may look like for the poor queen, let's say with kids. So even if money is an issue for her, her kids will wear the latest. They'll have the latest I don't know, Jordans, I don't know, you know, what the thing is that kids are wearing now. Um, iPhones, they will have top of the line everything. Whereas the rich queen, it doesn't mean that their children don't have things, but they're requiring, requiring them to do something. 
uh, in order for that that object or that item. They'll, you know, we use the word manifest and now they may say, okay, manifest it. Like when the kids say that they desire something, hey, Sharonda, darling, how are you? When the children say they desire something, the rich queen will find out, find ways for the, the children to um, come up with the money or earn the money. Whereas the poor queen, she may overgive and overcompensate. She'll go buy Jordans and the latest iPhones and all those things and then complain about money. So these are two differences. I have maybe about 10. So if you guys could do me a favor and share this out or tag someone, um, that would be awesome. 10 differences, the rich queen and the poor queen, right? So again, the rich queen increases their the value of what they give. The poor queen overgives and overcompensates. So what that may look like from an entrepreneurial standpoint. So maybe you're designing a course or something of that nature, right? Um, instead of increasing the value, meaning you may say 10 things that will change a person's business, life, money completely, right? And you understand the power of that thing that you're giving. The poor queen will try to add 50 different things to the course and just, you know, a whole lot of stuff that won't necessarily cause transformation, but it'll be a lot of stuff. I hope this is making sense to you guys. Rich queen, poor queen. Remember, the rich queen increases the value of what they give, and the poor queen focuses on overgiving and overcompensating. This also happens in relationships. So the rich queen, if she is focusing on the value that she gives, she has done her inner work. So she understands that the energy that she now holds, her ability to communicate properly, um, her ability not to blow up and all of those things, she understands that those things are things of value, whereas the poor queen would do a, a whole lot of extra stuff. She might be buying them stuff and, you know, just all the things, but the rich queen and the poor queen. So the difference is the rich queen focuses on giving more value and the poor queen focuses on overcompensating and overgiving. <clears throat> Next, the rich queen focuses on ways, no, the, the, the rich queen grows through their problems. The poor queen allows problems to become their prison. I'm going to say that again. The rich queen grows through her problems, whereas the poor queen allows her problems to be her prison. So how does the rich queen do, do, do this? The rich queen has a problem and she goes within to figure out what the problem is. She's willing to take a look at herself to see, okay, why is this consistently coming up in my life? Whereas the poor queen will allow problems to be their prison. So they just accept that this is happening, right? Um, it becomes their story. It becomes their way of life. Like this thing that, she's talking about, that they're going through becomes their story. It becomes their story that they live in. <clears throat> Sorry guys, my, my phone is going off over here. I should have hit stop notifications. I never think about doing that anymore. But um, she allows, remember the poor queen allows her problems to be her prison. So when you when she talks about things, she's talking about her problems. This is her story. This is the way it is. The rich queen will go within, find out what the root of the thing is, and um, she's willing to take responsibility for it. I hope this is making sense. <clears throat> um, the rich queen focuses on ways to earn more, whereas the poor queen complains about money. This is a huge, huge difference. You know, one of the things I have heard from people consistently is their complaint about people who, you know, earn a lot of money or they have these mindsets that I believe are myths about people who are wealthy and you know all of the things that they say they may say but what i notice is the poor queen will always be complaining about money right um even to the point of almost manipulating now i'm gonna say this it may be just a little hard but you even notice it i noticed this in my career many many years ago 
where if I offered something and I put, even if I offered a promotional price for it, the poor queen, and remember at the beginning of the broadcast, I talked to you about the fact that we're all royalty, right? When we give our lives to Christ, we, we come into the kingdom, we're all royalty, but there are stark differences. I talked about the fact that um, there's this reminder that we come from kings and queens. Even in Africa now, there are kings and queens and chiefs, but there's a stark difference. It's not always based on the quality of their life. Sometimes it's simply titles. And one of the reasons I feel, or two reasons I feel that, is because um, the queenship is really a mindset and a behavior. It's mindset and behavior. So what I noticed was, like, if I did something at a promotional rate, this was early on in my career prior to coaching and consulting when I owned a brick and mortar business, certain people would still want to know what else do I get? Is there something else included? Now, it's, it's, it's at a promotional rate. They want it even cheaper. It's just this thing that has a tendency to happen in that poor mindset realm where everything is like from a space of manipulation. Like they're always trying to get something for nothing. Poor queen mindset. Um, money has power over the poor queen mindset, right? Whereas the rich queen, um, she has power over her money, meaning things may happen in, in her life that are uncomfortable financially, right? Instead of allowing those situations and circumstances to have power over her, to dictate what she can and can't do, she learns how to have um, power over her money. So her conversations aren't about, we'll use the gas prices, right? Um, her conversations aren't about um, the gas prices. Her conversations would be about, how do I create more? I hope this is making sense. And I wanna share this with you because I've had this conversation with many people who have already made millions. And one of the things that I noticed consistently that I'm just using two individuals that they both stated was that if they were to lose their money, they could get it all back again. And the, the difference is, I want you guys to know that broke is situational. So something tragic can happen and a person who had amassed extreme amounts of wealth could end up broke, right? But poor is a mindset. Poor is a mindset. So we look at the things that's happening with Will Smith now and all of the things that are, um, you know, the deals and things like that, that he's losing. Lord forbid, we don't want to speak that he would become broke after having all of this wealth. But if it was to happen, because he has developed a certain mindset over time, right, where he talks about, or he makes moves that will empower him as it relates to money, he would get it all over again. But the poor queen will only complain about the situation. She, there's, she's not going to go and learn how to do more empowering things to grow her money. It will just be complaining about the money, not having you know, the economy, all of those things. Two differences. The rich queen is in touch with her feelings. And as I was making this list, I can remember specific times where I was on one side or the other, right? I can remember being on that other side where the, the poor queen overlooks how she feels. So when I say the, the rich queen is in touch with her feelings, what I mean by that, the rich queen is in touch with her feelings. What I mean by that is, She's not just allowing situations to continue in her life. She's going to stop, figure out what is this I'm feeling, why does this feel off. And remember I talked earlier about how the rich queen grows through situations. She's going to find out where the root of this is coming from, whereas the poor queen will overlook how she feels. She'll just keep going. And, and sometimes it becomes like a mechanism of survival right? Where we just push it off to the side and we just keep going, but that thing is actually still there. That's the behavior of the poor queen. I 
hope you guys are hearing me. The rich queen is in touch with her feelings. She's going to stop, process, see, okay, where is this coming from? I don't like how this feels. I am going to do something different. She's going to find a way to do something different. Whereas the poor queen will overlook her feelings and just kind of like keep moving. And it's something that we've been taught. We've been conditioned um, for that struggle, right? Um, we've also been given the title of strong <laughs> black woman, right? Or just strong woman. And it's, it's because we're not really going within. We're just kind of overlooking how we feel and just pushing through. The rich queen works smarter. The poor queen works harder. Just what it is. I, I even see it in, you know, coaching and consulting where, you know, maybe I'll give a really simple way to do something. And when the person is still in that poor queen mindset, they, they make it hard. They make it in their head. It's like super hard. They make it a lot more difficult than it has to be. Um, you know, I can give ways to increase their income, less their effort, and they'll go back to doing the thing that's actually harder differences between the rich queen and the poor queen. Um, the rich queen will see something that she desires and her thoughts will be, how can I afford this? So it may not be something in her immediate comfort zone, right, of doing. But her thoughts go to, how can I afford this opportunity, this thing that I need? The poor queen will immediately say, I can't afford this. Now, I want you guys to think about those two mindsets and think about them from a space of destiny. So if I can't afford this is the constant, consistent conversation, they never really elevate. They, they just stay on the level because... When you, when you take on the mindset, how can I afford this? What happens is you begin to expand and evolve into that thing that you desire. So once you've learned how to afford that thing, you've now elevated to a new level. I hope this is making sense to you guys. Please put me in the comments if this is making sense to you all. Behaviors and mindsets. The rich queen and the poor queen. They think differently. They do life differently. Their behavior is different, right? And oftentimes, this is something I learned that opportunities, even um, situations that we don't really want to happen in our life are really opportunities for us to grow. And depending on which mindset we use, um, it determines whether we grow, expand, evolve. Right, Because if we continue to say, that's not for me, I can't afford it, all of those different things, what we really do is we keep ourselves at this level. But this other thing requires you to go within to figure out a way that you can have the thing that you desire, which means that you expand and you grow in the process. You evolve in the process and now you're at a different level because of what you did in order to figure out how can I afford the thing? How can I afford the thing? See, I just believe it's a trick of the enemy that keeps us stagnant and, and stuck. Mindset, right? Um, the rich queen takes responsibility. The poor queen blames. The rich queen takes responsibility. The poor queen blames. It's so easy, right? You know, when you've had people to do you some kind of way, it's so easy to get caught in the trap of blaming them. But when we take responsibility, it's, it's not like we're saying this is my fault. What we're doing is we're going inside within to see what can I do differently? How am I allowing this? How am I being? Start differences. The rich queen, poor queen. The next thing, the rich queen releases what does not serve her. The poor queen holds on, right, and lives in that thing. The rich queen releases what does not serve her, which requires her 
to be tapped into herself, to go within, right? The poor queen will hold on and live in what doesn't serve her. They become a victim, right? The rich queen is paid based on her results. The poor queen is paid based on her time. I remember when I started coaching and consulting and people who didn't understand what it was that I was doing would consider it not a real job. Any of you ever been in a career where people will say, that's not real work, that's not a real job? It's because that mindset says you have to work by the sweat of your brow. Carisha, good morning, dear. You have to work by the sweat of your brow in order for it to be considered work. Remember, the rich queen is paid for her results. The poor queen is paid for her time. Um, I don't remember dates, but there I think it was during the what's called the Industrial Revolution. It impacted a lot of how even our school systems and our education process is. Because the process was to be able to train people to work for people, right? To clock in, to get, you know, paid by the number of hours they work, things of that nature. And it's really been conditioned into our entire society. And so, you know, for instance, I could be on a call with someone. So my, um, an hour with me would be 497. I could share one thing with them. That would, might take me two minutes to share it. That would change their whole life, right? Someone would look, someone else, <clears throat> the poor queen would look at that hour like $500 per hour because that's the mindset that they're operating their life from. Whereas the rich queen would be looking at the value of what she would be getting during that time. I could make it 10 minutes for the same information at the 497 cost and the value would be the same. I hope this is making sense. So the rich queen is paid on her results. I have clients who I've helped to, you know, uh, develop programs from their intellectual property. And when we go into pricing, you know, the pricing that they say or that I share, it may scare them just a little bit. But what I, what I share with them is you've taken umpteen number of months or years to get to this place. The person that is coming to get information from you is going to cut through a whole lot of time. They're gonna be able to do it sooner, quicker, faster, because you have already um, put the steps in place for them where they get to skip all of the other stuff that, that you did. So the value of them, that's what coaching is. It cuts away the time, the 10 years that it would take you into 10 months or 10 weeks or 10 days, right? So the <clears throat> rich queen is paid from her results. The poor queen is paid based on time. Well, how long did it take me to do it? I have clients who have services that triple the cost of someone else's service and they're not thinking about the time. They're thinking about the value that that customer gets. The rich queen focuses on being. The poor queen focuses on doing. The rich queen focuses on being. The poor queen focuses on doing. Where we have... Um, my phone is really going off today. This must be a word. <laughs> This must be for somebody to get what they need, right? One of the huge differences that I want to talk about is value. Value, value, value. It's attached to self-esteem. It's attached to worth because many people haven't identified their value. And when you haven't identified the value to which you bring to an opportunity, you know, you, you're going to focus on, let me do more. Let me just do more right? As opposed to being more. Let's look at a relationship. So if I've done my inner work and healing and I am 
in a relationship or courtship with um, a healthy man. The value of what I would bring to him because I've worked on how I communicate. I've worked on my feminine energy. I'm not as triggered or if I am triggered, my response isn't to um, shut down. My response isn't to lash out. That's valuable for a masculine man who's out there getting it, all of those different things. So my, my value changes because I've done my inner work. It also impacts on your job or within your business. I remember um, a young lady who was in an industry that I, the career that I was in prior to coaching and consulting. And her, her skill set was amazing. Like, she knew her stuff. But how she was being was awful. It, it was just awful. Only a certain type of individual could even deal with the, what I call the inadequacies, the things that she could have worked on being, the ways that she could have worked on being would have took her money and clientele to a whole nother level, an hour late. And then would tell the clients, look, you either wait <laughs> or you don't. And there's only a certain type of individual that's going to deal with that, right? And most of those individuals are gonna want what? A discount, a hookup, it, because it's a mentality. It's a mentality. And with the skill set that she had, had she done inner work, man, gone so much further, it would inc have increased her value. Because people are looking for, they're not only looking for a great service, but they're looking at how people make them feel. <laughs> they're looking at how people make them feel. Are they considerate? Timing would be consideration, respect, and honor, right? The way they speak to people. And see, when we haven't done our inner work, we're triggered, um, we don't even know our value. So we don't bother to work on that other thing because we have so much confidence in our skill set. We don't know that there are a few things that if we did it from the inside out, we would increase our value, our way of being, right? Um, the rich queen buys intentional. She's intentional about her purposes. The poor queen buys in excess. Because we've been taught if you got a whole lot of something, even if it isn't good quality, the, the look or whatever of wealth is there. But the rich queen buys intentional. She intentionally invests. She intentionally spends her money. It doesn't mean that she doesn't buy really nice things. It doesn't mean that she doesn't go to luxury events and luxury places and things of that nature. But oftentimes the rich queen, when she does get things of that nature or do things of that nature. It's because she understands how it impacts how she feels and how she is being. I hope this is making sense. The rich queen turns her pain into purpose. The poor queen turns her pain into more pain. The rich queen will have a circumstance that was hard. We all do. Life happens, it flips on us, all of those things. But she turns it into purpose. Whereas the poor queen turns it into, turns the pain into more pain. It's consistent. It becomes her story. Instead of going within, doing her inner work, figuring out why she's in this pain, why it's feeling this way, she, you know, allows it to just be her story. She lives in it as opposed to turning it into to purpose. Many of you may have a circumstance or a story or, or a situation that you've gone through that can be turned into purpose, right? Instead of allowing it um, to fester and become more pain. The rich queen uses her voice. This one right here is huge. The rich queen uses her voice to heal. The poor queen uses her voice to sabotage. Here's the difference. So the poor queen will use her voice to sabotage, meaning not just what she's saying to other people, but what she's saying to herself. It will sabotage new opportunities. It will sabotage um, new money. 
It will sabotage new relationships. Her voice. Her voice. Whereas the rich queen uses her voice to heal. Now, healing looks different for different people. One of the reasons the rich queen is able to use her voice for heal is because she's done her inner work. Because I think that there's a space in our journey where we, it's not that we're going to be quiet, but what we say does more damage than anything else. So when we're triggered, if we haven't done our inner work and our healing, we respond negatively. We lash out, we vent, we complain. But the rich queen uses her voice to heal. And that's because she's done her inner work. She's practiced healthy communication. She's learning She's learned what healthy communication is. So this doesn't mean that she dumbs down because the, the poor queen can use her voice to sabotage. But the sabotage would be that she never says anything about how something is making her feel. She doesn't have boundaries. So she never says anything. So she sabotages her own plight. So it's different ways that the voice is used by the poor queen that sabotages. And it's different ways that the rich queen is using her voice to heal. And one of the reasons that her voice is healing is because she's done her inner work. It doesn't mean that she doesn't mention or talk about hard things. She's learned how to communicate how something makes her feel. Hope this is making sense, right? The rich queen speaks up about what matters. But because she's done her inner work, the... The way that it's delivered still off offers space for healing. The rich queen uses fear as fuel. The poor queen uses fear as an indication to stop. The poor queen uses fear as an indication to stop. And although we all are of a royal priesthood, although we all have royal titles of queens we can have the title but it not impact the quality of our life if that makes sense to you we can have the title but it doesn't necessarily impact how we're living and that's because the whole thing about queenship is mindset and behavior and doing your inner work and understanding your value and your worth when I, t when I think about um, the rich queen using her voice to heal, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, your voice matters in your business. Extremely matters in your business, in what you're called to do. When I look at the state of relationships and um people, um, human behavior in this realm that we live in now, one of the things I decided was in my plight to help people heal and inner work and all of those things, I didn't want to bash men in the process. Do I talk about things that are transpiring that they do? Yes, there are times where that is necessary. But had I not done my inner work and healing, the way it comes across will be completely different. Because I can run amok <laughs> with some things based on my experience. But I've chosen to allow my voice to be a space for healing, which doesn't mean I don't talk about hard things. Does that make sense? What are some of the hard things that you need to communicate to people in your life? What are some of the hard things that you need to communicate with yourself? Not in a sabotaging way. Not in a hurtful way. Sharonda says, yes, ma'am. Not in a hurtful way. You can only, listen, being able to use your voice to heal only happens when you've done your inner work. You're either going to dumb down with your voice, not say anything, allow things to keep transpiring, or... You're going to learn what your triggers are, how to communicate. Remember I said one of the things that the, the rich queen does is she grows through her problems. And the poor queen 
allows her problems to become a prison. The, the rich queen will go within. She's willing to take responsibility. She's willing to do her work. So we get to decide. Although we are, it's our birthright that we are of a royal priesthood, um, although we may come from a lineage of kings and queens, how it is played out in our life is based on the mindset, the behaviors, and the inner work that we do. When I think about women in relationships who are overly giving and overly compensating, and, and not even fairly, they're not even trying to match. <laughs> you know, they're doing it for affirmation or to be considered valuable. Doing it for affirmation, to be considered valuable. They're not doing it because they're, they understand their value and their worth. Right? So the rich queen increases the value of what she gives. The poor queen overgives and overcompensates. I'm going to run back through the list um, one more time. I'm going to run back through the list one more time. Sharonda says, you just read my mind. Differences in the rich queen and the poor queen. If you're in the kingdom, you know that we are a royal priesthood, meaning that we kings and queens. Um, as African Americans, we hear it all the time. We come from royalty. Um, even in Africa today, there are still chiefs and kings and queens and all of those things, but not all of them are living in richness and abundance and wealth, even though they still have the title. And this is why I, you know, I have a master life session called Queen Behavior. And when I thought about the title, it was because of this very thing right here, because the name queen has been thrown around so much to me, um, just frivolously thrown around, whereas any type of behavior or action or mindset qualifies as a queen. And I just believe that the, the queenship that we rest in is much deeper. I believe there's a stark difference um, in you know what it is that we do in order to fully wear that title. And so I gave some differences in the rich queen mindset and behavior and the poor queen. I'll run down them really, really quick. Won't do a lot of explaining. You can go back to the beginning um, afterwards. For those of you who are just joining, good morning. I am Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am a master life and business coach, and I help women get their whole life, their money, get their time back, um, do inner work, heal and operate at the highest version of themselves. A rich queen, poor queen. Number one, the rich queen increases the value of what she gives. The poor queen overgives and overcompensates. The rich queen grows through her problems. She goes within, she finds out what the problem is. She's willing to take a look at herself. The poor queen allows her problems to be her prison. The rich queen focuses on ways to earn more money. The poor queen complains about money. So the rich queen talks about financial empowerment. She's finding more ways to earn money, whereas the poor queen will complain about it, even get to the point of manipulating. Money has power over them. Uh, the rich queen is in touch with her feelings. The poor queen overlooks how she feels. The rich queen works smarter. The poor queen works harder. The rich queen, um, how can I afford this? When an opportunity comes, that's the question that comes to their mind. The poor queen automatically says, I can't afford this. Uh, the rich queen takes responsibility. The poor queen operates in blame. The rich queen releases what does not serve her. The poor queen holds on and lives in what doesn't serve her. The rich queen is paid for her results. The poor queen is paid based on time. The rich queen focuses on her being who she's being. The poor queen focuses on doing the rich queen turns her pain into purpose. The poor queen turns her pain into more pain. The rich queen uses her voice to heal. The poor queen uses her voice to sabotage. The rich queen uses fear as fuel. The poor queen uses fear as an indication to stop. That's my take on today, guys. Um, the Queen Behavior Master Life Session is going down. Renewfullcircle.com slash queen B. That's with the letter B. It should be at the top of this video. Um, we're talking about queenship. We're talking about self-esteem and setting that um, <clears throat> boundaries in your life so that you can operate as the rich queen that you are. 
And self-esteem is how a person values themselves. And this determines how they live out their life. It determines how they, which side of the pendulum they operate on, the rich queen or the poor queen, right? And so self-esteem is how you value yourself and how you see your worth. And once you have tapped into a new realm of self-esteem, you begin to operate on the other side of the pendulum, the rich queen pendulum. That's my take. I hope this has been a blessing to you all. Have a super amazing day. Thank you for those of you who tag someone. Um, those of you who come on, see it and share it out. I appreciate you in advance. Um, my why is for women, right? I believe that a new level of, of self-esteem and creating, creating boundaries changes your entire life. After doing my own inner work, I realize that we can be confident and we can go and do all the things in the world space. We can create businesses and have success and write books and, um, you know, run Fortune 500 companies and C-suite positions and all the things. And that is based on our confidence and our skill set. But then we'll turn around and our personal lives and relationships will suck. And a lot of that is based on our self-esteem. And there's a difference in your self-confidence and your self-esteem. Your self-esteem is how you value yourself and your worth. And you are a rich queen. That's my take.